What you are seeing right now are pictures of generic upscalers. They come in different forms, different analog connector types and sizes. They basically allow you to take an analog signal like composite and allow you to see the picture via HDMI. Sounds great until you realise 99% of them are pure garbage. Not to mention composite is a poor signal to begin with. Now this is the Porter Component 2 HDMI upscaler. This allows you to use component cables and converts the picture and signal to 1080p or 720p. It will also convert at a fixed 60Hz. This is by far the best of the cheapest upscalers I've used but here's the big sterling question. Is the OSSC that much better? To find out, I used my Joytech component cables for the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 along with my official Sony component cables for the PlayStation Portable. For the consoles, I wanted to find out how both upscalers handled 240p or 288p, 480i or 576i, 480p and switching resolutions on the fly. Let's go. Before we jump in, a huge disclaimer. The Porter device, no matter what I tried, would not work on my Agato HD 60S Plus. I had to dig out my old Agato Game Capture HD to get the footage you see here. At 1080p, the Elgato forces a capture cap of 30 frames per second and attempts to move it to 720p for 60 frames per second capture proved fruitless too. Basically, pretend the frame rates match, okay? The Porter also makes everything 16x9 by, by default, but thanks to my TV settings, we can display this footage correctly. Sorry in advance and enjoy the results. Right, so unlike most videos I make, I'm taking a different approach. I will go through a general talk between the two devices on the consoles I use. I ultimately want you guys to make your own decisions based on what you see on screen. Now then, let's begin with the PlayStation 1 content and we'll start with the Porter Upscaler. The Porter handles PS1 content about as well as you'd expect. This upscaler forces everything to run at 1080p all of the time. Yes, both progressive and interlaced content. Sadly, this device mishandles 240p or 288p as 480i or 576i. Oh, and if you play interlaced content, it smushes the fields together. The colours are also off, too oversaturated and the black levels are far too high. Everything looks too dark. You can also see anomalies in the picture and strange artefacts that just shouldn't be there. The Porter does have one advantage though. If you play games that switch resolutions like Dino Crisis or Silent Hill, this won't trouble the upscaler at all and there's no dropout so there's that. Now the OSSC. The OSSC handles everything differently. Unlike the Porter, this will use line multipliers to upscale the footage. For 240p to 88p resolutions, we are using the Line 5x mode which gives us 1080p or close enough anyway. For the interlaced content, I'm using the Line 4x mode. The results of this upscaler speak for themselves. Not only is the frame rate correct for once, but we also get a much more accurate look overall. Of course, customizing and having options for the picture is just the beginning. The colors are handled much better and so are the black levels. Interlaced content though, while great, isn't the best. The Bob the interlacing effect, while fast and it does look sharper, the jumpy look is not for everyone. 
The pass-through mode requires deinterlacing and depending on your setup, this might add lag. Lastly, this device is slow to switch resolutions on the fly, so games that do this often like Dino Crisis or Silent Hill will border on unplayable. Right, here are some more samples and listen out for how the two devices handle the sound from the PlayStation. Next up, the PlayStation 2. The PlayStation 2 is an interesting beast. 480i or 576i interlaced resolutions are most common here, but we also have a few games that have 40p support and even 240p, well. Anyway, the PlayStation 2 sees the porter do better than the PlayStation 1 results. 480p for this device is definitely the upscaler's preferred resolution. As you can see, it handled this particular resolution better than I expected. However, the picture quality is clear to see. The image looks oversharpened and blurry at the same time which is an interesting oddity. Usually it's one or the other. We also get strange and off colours, strange artefacts in the picture, and mishandling of 576i due to running 50Hz games at a forced 60Hz. There's no lag to report though, nothing major anyway. The OSSC handles PS2 games as well as it can. Sadly, Bob the interlacing while sharper, especially at the 4x mode, has the jumpy look which some of you will dislike. Otherwise, the line multiplier upscaler handles everything beautifully. 480p content looks accurate and sharp when using the 2x mode to make it 960p. Of course, the aspect ratios are all correct and all regions' respective frame rates are processed properly by the OSSC. If the Bob the interlacing bothers you, try pass through mode. Now, let's see how the two upscalers handle the sound coming out of the PlayStation 2. Will one be better than the other? Yeah! 
last but certainly not least, the PlayStation Portable. Right, the PSP is very interesting because it has two different outputs. Progressive for 480p only and interlaced which can display 240p or 288p or 480i or 576i. PSP content on my PSP 2000 can only work in progressive scan mode. Sadly, PSP games are played in a small window so I had to zoom it in into 16x9. Yeah, this can look ugly when played on a poor upscaler. As for the PS1 on PSP video output, it's pretty much the same as my PS1 section of this video. Just worse looking as the PSP's video output is slightly blurred. The divring patterns also show up very heavily in PS1 video output, thus making the image look even more blurry. As for the OSSC, it does wonders for PlayStation Portable content. Its upscaling prowess really shines thanks to the 2x line multiplier for 480p. I believe this is the sharpest video output you can get from a stock PlayStation Portable. Where things do get more interesting to me though, is the PlayStation 1 video output. The results are the same as I said for the Porter. But the 5x mode does wonders and makes the PSP a very good choice for playing PlayStation 1 games on a TV outside a PlayStation 1, native, PlayStation 2 and a PlayStation 3, of course. Also, here's a neat little trick that I found out. While I recommend playing 240p games using the interlace mode for the best results, if you are playing a game that outputs interlace only, such as Dead or Alive, watch this. Switch the PSP output to progressive 480p and wow, look at that. The game looks even better than you'd expect. Although not quite as sharp as the OSSC 4X mode on a real PS1 or PS2, the results are truly impressive and the game looks so clean. I would rather play Dead or Alive on the PSP using this method. And what about the sound output? Which upscaler sounds the best on PlayStation Portable? Here are a few samples. Shield active. At this point, the differences between the two are pretty conclusive. The Porter falls behind in every way and the OSSC for the most part is a great tool for making retro games look fantastic. 
The Porter is the best cheap upscaler I've personally used and again it will display faster frame rates just not using my Elgato Game Capture HD. The HD 60S Plus I would normally use just didn't want to work with this upscaler. Bear in mind the price difference. The Porter component to HDMI was 30 quid for me from Amazon. The OSSC which I got from eBay was £140. That's £110 more expensive. I'm sure a lot of you out there don't want to pay that much so here are some alternatives for you. Get the RAD 2X line of cables that are HDMI for the console in question or use the RetroTIC 2X line of products. They are all cheaper than the OSSC and give a great image quality for the consoles in question. The products all top out at around 480p resolution when using the line double feature and usually cost anywhere from £45 to £90. While the RAD 2X cables can be bought from retro gaming cables here in the UK, sadly the RetroTINK line is an American product so if you want that, you'll have to import it. You can try and search for the ODV upscaler which I've used on my channel in the past. These episodes in particular here were all recorded with that upscaler. It's basically a RetroTINK 2X but cheaper. Still, if you can find it for £40 to £60, it's worth a look. Hopefully folks, this video has shown you why a cheap or non-branded upscaler can cause you pain rather than pleasure. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I will do my best to answer. But until my next video, I will see you soon.